Hi everyone, my name is Otem. I am one of the creators of Atlas, an open source database schema management tool. In the last video, we showed how to use Atlas for a workflow called declarative schema migrations. It's a sort of a Terraform-like way of managing your database schema. In this video, I want to show you an alternative workflow that's also very popular with users that's called version migrations. Now, with declarative migrations, the way it works is that we provide Atlas with the desired state of the schema, a connection string to the database, and Atlas kind of figures out the diff and outputs a plan. How do we get from the old state to the new state? With version migrations, it's a much more explicit approach where we as developers specify exactly the scripts of how to go from one version to the next. Each such change is called a migration because it migrates the database from the old version to the new version. Now, let's see this project. We can see that we have a few files here already. The first thing I want to show you is this Atlas HCL file. This is not necessary. It's just as a convenience, a project configuration file that defines a local environment and sets some defaults here. So I can type less while I'm showing you this demo. Next, we have this uh, migration script. This is the first file in this migration directory and basically just as simple, DDL statement, a simple create table uh, statement creates the user's table. Now, let's see uh, how we're going to do this. Now, we have a local Docker container running, running MySQL, and we're going to work against it as if it was our uh, production database. Cool. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the status of the database locally. And I'm going to use the migrate status command, migrate groups all of the version migrations uh, commands together. And I'm using the env local flag, which refers to this configuration file that I showed you before. So we can see that our current environment has no migrations applied yet. It has one pending script. So let's start by running this uh, first migration. So the command that used to uh, apply migrations on migrate apply. And if we don't specify a number of versions, it's going to just going to run all the available migrations to the end. Great, this took like 30 milliseconds and it ran all the existing migration files with that contained only one uh, SQL statement. So let's now go and check the status of our target database. We can see that uh, the database is already at the latest version, so nothing to do. Now, suppose we want to upgrade our database. We introduce some feature. We already have this users table. Now we want to introduce the blog post table. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the new command. I'm using the edit flag that opens an interactive editor. Uh, it's a bit faster to use. And let's call this new revision. Give it the label of create blog post. Okay, great. So we're going to add uh, create table blog post, and it has a ID column that's the primary key, and it has a contents column that's text. And you know what? Let's add a title um, that has a length of 255. So pretty standard. Cool. Now let's check again what's the status of the migration directory. So as you probably expect, we have one executed file, the users table we created before, and this pending file, this new file that was just uh, created by us. So let's uh, run these integrations to the end and we can apply and set this to one. It will be the same effect. And now we run our um, new migration. To verify, Let's run uh, migrate status again, and we can see that we have two executed, two executed files and that the database is already at the latest version. If you watched the previous video, you're probably wondering why would teams opt into a workflow that's so complex compared to declarative migrations? Why would teams choose version migrations over declarative migrations. And it turns out there are a few good reasons and let's briefly discuss them. So to recap, uh, version migrations, we have a sequence of scripts. We need to create each of them uh, explicitly. And declarative approach, we just 
give Atlas the desired state, it automatically connects to the uh, existing database and will create this diff, this plan for us. So why would teams opt in to version migrations as their schema management workflow? Here goes. First of all, visibility. Teams are used to working with version migrations. They are really concerned that a bad change might cause something, some harm to the database. The database outage is usually very painful. And so version migrations lets team see each change beforehand, review it during code review, and just gain this confidence that nothing bad is going to happen to the database. In addition, more control. Sometimes there are multiple ways to get from point A to point B. So we provide the database with a new desired state where we have a username column. And the database contains uh, a column called name that doesn't exist in the new version. So what did we mean? Did we mean to rename the name column into username? Or did we mean to drop the name column and create the username column. Very, very different outcome for your application. In addition, sometimes teams want more granular control over exactly how changes uh, um, are run. And for example, when you create an index, you can create it in a normal way or you can create it concurrently, which uh, creates a very different type of uh, behavior. So with version migrations, developers get to spell out the, the changes explicitly, which gives them more control over what's going to happen. In addition, sometimes some teams develop products that are deployed to multiple environments, like on-premises software. And also many times with these circumstances, you don't have network connectivity to the database that um, you're managing. So with Declarative migrations, similar to how you work with, with Terraform, there is an interactive component, right? Atlas connects to the database, prompts you with the plan, you look it over, make sure that nothing uh, wrong is going to happen, and then you uh, approve this change and then it runs. But with on-prem remote uh, environments, you don't have that uh, privilege to, to be there to approve the change uh, as it happens. So. Version migrations let you kind of ship with your application uh, exactly what changes are needed to, to run for your um, next version of your application. So we understand why sometimes version migrations are necessary, but it still sounds like a pretty painful development experience. I mean, the need to craft each schema migration by hand to write the SQL we already have Atlas that knows how to plan these changes automatically. So wouldn't it be great if we didn't need to? In the next video, we're gonna show a workflow called version migration authoring that takes all the great things from version migrations and all the great things from declarative migrations and offers your team a workflow where you could get Atlas to plan the migrations for you, but still get all the control and visibility that you get from a migration directory. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did and you want to get uh, more content, learn more about Atlas, please subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, please uh, give us a plus one. And of course, don't forget to check out Atlas. Our website is at atlasgo.io. So uh, see you in the next video.